Hey guys, welcome back to the Faithful Farmer Mama. Every night around this time, right before the sun goes down, I like to make a round and kind of go throughout the farm and just check things. It's one of those very special times of the evening that I really enjoy because it's quiet. You can hear birds in the background. Usually the guineas are starting to come up to where they need to be and everything's starting to settle down here on the farm. Let, come along with me tonight as I do some nighttime chores that I do every single night. Um, I'm just glad to be able to share it with you. So thanks for being here. Hope you enjoy this video. So before we mosey off and do chores, please go down below and find the subscribe button along with the little bell. You're going to want to click both of those so that you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. Every night around this time, I actually go walk and check on everything that is on the farm. I visit my gardens, I go visit all of the animals, and just make sure that everything is going the way it's supposed to, because things can change so quickly here on the farm. I feel like one day, if, without checking from morning till night, so much can happen. Today has been one of those days. Every now and then, we have things happen on the farm that makes a day very difficult. Today's been one of those days. We've been hatching guineas, guinea fowl. Guinea fowl are birds, kind of like chickens, but they're not actually chickens. They are birds and they take a little bit of special care not really, but they do. Our guinea fowl actually roam our property. We don't do anything special with them. I give them a little bit of corn every now and then, but for the most part, they graze on the land. They eat what's out here. They are big bug eaters. They love ticks and snakes and rats and all kinds of bugs. So having them is very essential. They do not eat anything in my garden. I've tried to give them greens and vegetables and fruits and they snub their nose at it. So I love having them on the farm. But in our incubating, we have had some, for the most part, our incubation of guinea eggs has been wonderful. But this particular batch, it's been kind of sad. It was a very small egg because the guineas that had laid them were, it was their first time laying, so it was just very difficult to incubate such a small egg. And then the babies were small and they are growing well. I have four very strong-willed, very um, determined little guineas. But I had 12 in the incubator, five still have not hatched, and two have died. So it's just a little sad that when, excuse me, I have four that didn't hatch. Um, so it can be sad when you lose animals on the farm, no matter how many times you do it, it's just kind of hard. It makes for a really hard day. But then I get to come out here to the garden and I get to go out there to the chicken coop and the cut flower garden. And I visit our animals that are out here, including the donkey, and the, the uh, horse that we have, and I go see our blueberry bushes, and it makes this farm so worthwhile. It's amazing when you come out and things that weren't here yesterday all of a sudden are here. I have purple peppers that are growing. They're so beautiful, guys, and they're so good. It just is so amazing to be able to see God making things grow, like serrano peppers, I mean, y'all know the story that I've had with peppers this year. I feel like it's just been one of those years for me not to be able to grow peppers. And my carrots, although when I started to harvest, they were not big enough to actually harvest yet. I still have beautiful carrots down here growing. Slowly but surely, it is all coming together. And then there's things like this. This is my cilantro. Once cilantro flowers, it's no longer good to eat. And I love it um, to have it in the house, but how beautiful are these flowers on the cilantro? 
today I did find out I am a new gardener so I'm learning all the time when cilantro flowers and goes to seed the seed that comes off of the cilantro flower is actually coriander and coriander is so amazing to put on I like to crush it and put it on fish and also on chicken and I get to enjoy things like my butternut squash, which is just starting to get their second leaves so that they can climb this beautiful trellis. I cannot wait until the middle of the summer when they are totally over this trellis with beautiful, beautiful squash. And although I've already harvested my dill, which is also getting ready to go to flower and seed, I keep finding these worms on there. But look how beautiful they are. Best part, they're going to the chickens. Y'all, yeah, I've learned so much from my garden this year. I have learned that putting things in places that you normally would not put them makes beautiful fruit. And I've learned just because something is done growing doesn't mean that you can't put something else in its place. And just because a crop does not give you the humongous fruit that you had hoped to get, it still provides some delicious food for your family, like these potatoes. I love salt potatoes. Salt potatoes are just little potatoes that are boiled in salt water and lots of butter. But yet I had big potatoes like this that are just gorgeous. And although my onions are small, they still actually do their purpose. I'm able to cook with them and eat them and save them throughout the winter so that we have food in the winter as well. I've learned that adding food into my flower gardens actually makes them grow and it makes your flower gardens beautiful like this beautiful sorrel. I think one of the greatest things about gardening is that you continue to learn about plants and about their their origins and where they come from and what they actually are for. So this here is lavender if I can get it to focus there. Lavender is so beautiful and it smells so good. Lavender is part of the rosemary family. They, as the rosemary, love the southern sun. So that is why this beautiful plant is on my south facing wall. Something else that I enjoy at night when I come out to close up my chickens is that I get to chase a chicken every single night. I have one bird who refuses to stay in the pen at night. She breaks out and she tries to get as far away from the pen as she can. Let me introduce you to her. This is Cupcake. Cupcake thinks that she can fly out of her chicken yard and do whatever the heck she pleases. She is one of my first chickens that I ever had. I bought her in a little town called Pittsburgh, North Carolina. She literally was the size of a potato, actually smaller, when I got her. This is Cupcake. Oh, that Cupcake. And I love coming out here just to kind of hang out with my chickens. There's nothing like them at night because they just kind of hang around and Oh, there's, ow, they're so funny. I just fell in a hole. Um, they're funny because they follow, they talk to me, and it's really weird. I, it's like they know who I am, which is really kind of funny to me. But every night I do come out here, I just check and make sure I have 13. Um, I make sure I close this door back here because they do, we do have predators out here. We have coyote and bobcat and of course snakes. So I'm constantly out here trying to make sure that my birds are safe. Uh, it's one of the big joys that I have here on the farm.
I even always make a check on our orchard just to see how things are growing. And I do come out to the cut flower garden, guys, because it's changed so much in such a very short time. Yesterday we had massive winds and it actually blew over a couple of my squash plants, like over there by that bottle. That one squash plant fell over, but look underneath. I have squash growing and zucchini and corn. I have a lot of plants, corn plants growing, but just the one on the end and that one there that's really tall and behind them climbing up the trellis. I have beautiful melons that are growing and tomatoes. Look at all the Roma tomatoes that I have. It is amazing to me to see such beauty. Peppers and zinnias and sunflowers, even cucumbers. I'll actually just hang out here, listening to the birds and the people that are close by but not close enough to see. I enjoy just sitting out here and just being. Farm life can be so rewarding, guys. This little guy is actually getting ready to turn two this month. This is Herbie. Herbie thinks he's a dog and acts like a goat. <laughs> he's looking at me out of the corner of his eye. Hi, ah, Herbie. He's such a sweet boy. And then we have Bill. Every night we put them inside the stall to make sure that they are safe from predators, but more because they roam our 25 plus acres without any kind of restraint. They do have a fence to keep them inside the perimeter, but they do get to actually walk the entire acreage. I really needed this walk tonight in the, throughout the farm guys. These are our guineas here. I think we may have lost one. We had 10. We've had nine for a while. And then all of a sudden one disappeared. But as I'm filming this, I think I hear our missing guinea. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, seven. It's so sad when we lose them. I never know what to do. It's just a heartbreaking feeling. I'm grateful for these parts of the day when I get to enjoy sweet little birds as they grow. Even if they're not growing quite the way you want them to. Well guys, thanks so much for walking around with me tonight as we did our nighttime chores and my garden checks. I do this every single night. I like to just check out what's here on the farm and remember why we are doing what we're doing. My family grows food and has animals to feed our family. Everything that we do here on the farm has some point. They're not just here for no reason. Things like our chickens give us eggs, our guineas help to give us eggs, but also help to give us a living. Um, we sell the Keats so that we can make some extra money to pay the electric bill or um, our water bill because we don't have a well. Things like that. So everything that we do on the farm really matters to our family. Things like our garlic and our onions that we harvest. Those things go into a storage spot for us to have in the winter time. So we don't have to travel to the store. Our goal is not to have to go anywhere all the time. So I'm grateful for this farm. Even though things like loss of life and things that don't happen the way that they probably should, it gets discouraging and it's hard, but it's so worth it. Even if you're in the suburbs, 
you guys can have a little piece of the country as well. You can join me here <clears throat> twice a week. I try to post twice a week something that has to do with gardening or crafting or DIY or decoration or cooking or preserving or gardening. I try to do something all the time so that we can spend time together, but also to help encourage you because if you do live in a subdivision or in an apartment, you can still garden in containers. You can still become a homestead. Homesteading is not living on massive amounts of land and being able to do all of your own things. Homesteading really is not going to these large retail stores to survive. Go to the farmer's market, go in, find local beef, find local chickens, find someone who can get you meat. Those are the ways that you can become a homesteader yourself. Thanks guys for being here. I hope you guys have a blessed rest of the weekend. Bye-bye.